Shabbat Shalom, my loves. Yes, the times are continuing to present us with ample opportunities to feel our feelings. I don't know about you, although I suspect you can relate, but I literally have been waking up every morning on the verge of tears, imagining the suffering that unfolded in the night, the particularly in the Holy Land and particularly in Gaza, the the degree of anguish is traveling across the miles and directly entering my heart and I can't not feel it. It's hard to know how to contribute at a time like this. And, I, and that's the part I know that you can relate to wherever you are. We don't want to increase the polarization and the this kind of self-righteousness that is dominating the narrative where people are convinced that they have all the answers and that the other is evil. And yet, almost anything we say feels inadequate, right? So it's an interesting time to launch an audio book about a very personal set of losses, which is precisely what we're doing right now over here. Um, my memoir, Caravan of No Despair, a memoir of loss and transformation, has uh, just been released as an audio book, which is read in my own voice. And this is the thing, that while it is deeply personal, it's about all of the losses that have woven the tapestry of my heart, it is also somehow universal. So people who read, read this book have always reported that it somehow speaks to them, even though it's very specifically and particularly and idiosyncratically about me. And that's the power of writing, is that the more authentically, honestly, vulnerably, without trying to make ourselves look pretty, we can tell our own stories, the more magically universal they become. And so as I'm listening to my own audiobook right now, I am hearing the ways that it can speak to the broken heart of the world in these tumultuous times. No matter what your cultural or religious background or lack thereof may be. So I'm kind of randomly picking a passage to read to you right now, just kind of opened it. And this is, this is what I chose for this Sabbath note. And so I make this as an offering for your Sabbath this week to kind of reflect on and, and be with and see if it addresses both your personal losses and your, your sense of um, pain for the broken heart of the world. I have never met a bereaved mother who did not, at some point anyway, maybe in a place so secret that it was even secret from herself, crave death. Part of this could be attributed to suicidal despair. But there is another aspect to the desire to die after your child has died, the allure of the other world. You have caught a glimpse of that realm, and it has dazzled you. It is luminous and vast. It is the holiest thing you have ever seen. And your child lives there. The mystics of all traditions bless the annihilating power of love. The highest calling of the moth is to fly into the heart of the candle flame. I praise what is truly alive, Goethe proclaimed, what longs to be burned to death. This is why John of the Cross considered a dark night of the soul to be very good news. It is only when night falls on the house of the ordinary faculties that the soul is able to risk slipping away for a secret rendezvous with the beloved in the garden. This is when Teresa of Avila had a vision of an angel plunging his flaming arrow into her belly and she never wanted it to end. 
This is why the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad suggests that you die before you die. Once we have died to the false self, we have hope of getting out of our own way and meeting the Holy One face to face. Grief strips us. It stripped me. I couldn't help but notice that this radically naked state resembled what all my favorite mystics had been trying to teach me for decades. You can't have divine union encumbered by spiritual addictions and cosmic concepts. You can't make love with your clothes on. Now, here I was, disrobed by loss, dipped in fire, pretty much annihilated. What used to make my spirit soar now left me cold, and none of my ideas about ultimate reality made any sense. What I had been trying to accomplish through years of rigorous discipline had happened overnight, a state of no self. I was ready for the holy encounter at last, but I wasn't in the mood. I wanted to want God, but I wanted Jenny more. Thank you, my loves, holding your broken heart in mine. Shabbat Shalom.